Welcome to Workshop Wednesday. We're going to look at how to make handmade paper with using items that you have around the house and create some wonderful different types of paper just by using supplies that we can find and utilize at our house without spending a bunch of money, but yet we can try this little technique on a smaller scale here at home. Here's some others to show you. These are pretty cool. I don't know if you can see the texture. There's some patterns on these. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Or we can also look at molding paper. How do we make paper shape into forms? Here's a few more textures. We're also gonna look at ways that we can assemble our textures and our molds and create some journal pages. I have some journal page books that we'll go through in another episode and we'll talk about how to make these books. But for this one, you can see here's a journal page. It's got the paper and then it's got the molded paper. And then this is just some gauze that's been dyed with some watercolor. And then here's another one, another book. I have lots of these big books with lots of pages. So be sure and check out all the episodes. Anyway, this one, you can see here's where I use one of the molded pieces of handmade paper um, for this particular journal page. So, first thing we're gonna do is gather our supplies. So I've gathered up some things I found around the house to try to be able to make some handmade paper here at home without spending any money. And what I found is I have this small little blender to make little smoothies with. Uh, we quit using it a while back. We haven't used it for a while. So I'm going to use it for my handmade paper. And you can find these. They're inexpensive if you want do want to buy one. It's a, I think this one was Walmart and it's probably about $14. So not very expensive. So I have my little blender. And what I have found is I found this little crate that I had that was a screen. And then I have my little paint water tray that I use with my painting. And then a cookie sheet. And that's gonna catch my overflow of my water. So the other thing I found is I have this screen where I've made paper before, but this is just window screen. And you can see what that looks like, just window screen. And so I'm gonna lay this on top of my crate that where the water is gonna soak through, but this is gonna allow me to pick up my paper very easily and not have to try to peel it off of this screen. So I like to always put a piece of screen down first before I start this process. And then I located a sponge. So I have a sponge. I have a container of water. I have a container that I have paper soaking in. And so for my handmade paper, I have a lot of scrap paper around from my journaling and stuff. And so I just have a bin of lots of scraps. So I went through and pulled some of that out and tore it up. You can use old mail, you can use newspapers, uh, all kinds of things. I would not use decorative papers that have glitter or other metal pieces on them. It doesn't work very well in the blender and it will it'll pretty much damage the blade. So I would just use things that you can just repurpose and recycle and give them a new life. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my paper that's been soaking for a while and I'm gonna pour it into my blender. And then I'm going to get all the paper out. Okay, this only filled up about halfway, as you can see. So what's going to happen is if I just try to blend this now, that it's too much paper to water ratio. So that's going to cause my blades to burn up. So I'm going to take my pitcher of water and I'm going to fill it up. There we go. I also have a little bit, since I'm making a small amount, I don't need a lot of this. But this is cotton linter. It comes in a bag. You can, you can order it online like this if you like. Um, but cotton, cotton linter helps create a binder in your paper to make it more that, that natural handmade look. So I'm just gonna put a pinch of that in there as well. And then I'm going to blend this. Now, I can 
can just blend it a little bit if I want my paper to be a little chunkier and not real smooth blended if I want different flakes to show. Or I could go ahead and blend it all the way. Okay, that looks pretty good already. That's one thing I like about this little blender. It blends super fast versus a big one. Now, you can see, you can see I have my paper pulp here. Now, I could come along and I could add other things like confetti, pencil shavings, dried roses or petals or flowers, anything like that I could put in this. And then to make it stirred real nicely, you'd want to just push this button just really fast. Don't let it blend too much or it'll just, it'll um, make that really small pieces and won't really show as much. So I'm not gonna do that today, I'm just gonna keep my basic color here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour it over my screen. Remember I have my crate and my screen, and then I have a tray that's gonna catch most of the water, but another tray underneath to catch the rest. So I'm just gonna carefully pour it and try to pour it evenly. Now what happens a lot of times is you think you get a little bit on there and you have it covered but when you go to press it out, it's too thin. So make sure you kind of spread that out. You don't have to do it all at once. You could do a couple of different ones. So I'll save that, I'll add some more water to it and I'll make another piece. So I have it here, you can hear it dripping down underneath there. But I take another screen and I put it on top and I'm going to try to press more of the water out. You know, if you ha were at school or, you know, at, at some businesses, they have actual presses that will press that water out, but you're just at home and you just want to give it a try, this is a nice way to do that, just using things that you have. So I have a lot of water pressed out. The next thing I do, I want to use my sponge. So I'm going to take my sponge and I'm going to keep rolling it and push the water out to the side. And the more water I get out, the more firm my paper will be. And you can see, this is one that, you know, you buy it hanging in the shower. It's got the little knob on it. I should have cut that off, but. And you can see, my sponge is getting saturated. So I can wring my sponge out over my tray or I could just wring it back in with the pulp I hadn't used yet. It's fine. So you wanna get as much of that out as you can. And then you can check it. Now it might stick to your screen but what you, all you have to do is just kind of get it started and that will roll right off. I probably need to get a little bit more water out of that, but then you'll have your paper. And then you want to sit and let that dry. Now, if you were going to mold it, you want it to dry just for a little bit, but not completely. Otherwise, it'll be hard to form. If your paper dries completely, all you have to do is spritz it with some water and then put it in your form. So for example, here's this small one. So here's this small one. Okay, so all I would have to do is spritz this with some water and then I can put it over a form. I found this one time and I looked at it and I love this piece of metal with all these different circles and these shapes on here. And so what this does is that allows me to push my paper. You can take a rolling pin, you can just push it with your fingers, whatever works for you. If you have a brayer from printmaking, you could use a brayer and roll it over that. And what happens is you get this really nice, cool effect that looks like this. You see that 
the little bubble shapes. And what's fun is what you'll find is where this metal is here and it comes here, it's super smooth. So it's textured in between, but it's super smooth on the other parts. You can see where I put a little confetti in this paper and I'll put some close up shots at the very end of the video for you to see some of those. But look around and see what kind of cool things that you have laying around that would work for this. I know other things that I've used. Sometimes woven baskets work great or crates that have this pattern on them. You can also, um, sometimes there's plastic um, rubbing plates. If you have some of those laying around the house, you could also press your paper into that. This one happens to be butterflies. So it's a lot of fun because once you get started, it's like, oh, I could make this or I could make that texture or that pattern. That would all be really cool. The other thing about doing molds, so this is a mold. It's actually little, little faces, <laughs> kind of hard to see. But I thought this was really fun. This mold here is actually small little children. So one side, this is like for ceramics when they pour slip into them to make molds. And sometimes you find these even at thrift stores. It's kind of fun and you can use them to make paper. This one is like little children. That's the front sides. And then this one is of course the back sides because when the mold goes together, to pour your slip in, you know, you have the two sides. But it's kind of fun to take your, your wet paper, let's see if I got enough out of this one and we can kind of do it here. What you want to do is make sure that you have this sprayed or you've used Vaseline or something on it to keep them from sticking, okay? And then you can take your paper Mine's a little wet, but let's give it a try. So I'm going to roll that off. Okay, so here's my paper and here's my little mold. And so I can lay that kind of across here. And then I'm going to have to kind of jiggle it and wiggle it and kind of poke it down in. You see that? So I don't get all of them, but and get some of them because you got to allow for that to kind of go down in those little little um, sections of the people and then if you need to you can always come in and plug remember this is the back side you just want to make sure the front side is pressed really well the back side nobody's really going to see it if you're going to put it on your journal page but you know what here's the thing if you set, decide that you don't like it it's like uh, I don't know that that's working. You're going to have to let it dry though. Uh, if you decide it's not working for you and you don't like it, or you only like part of it, well, guess what? This part that I don't like, I'm just going to tear that off. I'm going to put it back in my blender and make some more paper with it. So maybe I have too much here. I'm just going to go ahead and tear that off and put that back in the blender. And maybe I'm just going to keep these two little guys right there and we'll see what we've got. So I can let that dry. You want to let it dry in the mold. So I probably should put that back in there. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry in the mold. And put a little thicker piece there over his face so I can shape his face a little bit more. So I'm just gonna set that aside and let that dry. So here's my extra. What I can do, I can just put that in there and guess what? You need to make sure you fill this back up with water so you don't burn your blade. And just zap it real quick. And you have pulp again. And now you do the process again. So if you decide you don't like what you've got, you can just start over, scoop it up, put it back in, make it wet again, and start with a whole new process. And it's really fun to start mixing colors. You know, think about color theory and your color wheel. 
Um, sometimes I could ye add yellow to this pink and get this beautiful sunrise orangish color. It would turn out awesome. But just be sure to, the key trick is to make sure you put a screen down first. See, it just makes it so easier to pick it up and move it if I wanted to dry my paper on cardboard and let it sit. But also have another piece of screen here and it allows you to get some of that paper, that water out of that to make your paper stay together. And I didn't have to put litter in it this time because I was using what I'd already mixed. So if you're starting from fresh, you would want to put some of that cotton litter in it um, just to kind of help your paper hold together. But you can see, just take your sponge, push the water out. And then pull this back. Of course, you're gonna get most of the water out. And then put this on a piece of cardboard and just set it aside and let it dry, okay? I will tell you though, this water that's left over, there's still a little bit of pulp in it. Do not put this down your toilet, your sink, or any drain of your house. Um, because that paper, you can see how my screen, some of the paper was still sticking to it. When it dries, it'll dry to your pipes. So you don't wanna do that. So since it's paper, it'll disintegrate. So um, I just go outside and dump it outside. We even do that same thing at school. We take it outside and dump it. We don't put it in the sinks at school. All right, have fun, give it a try. See what different things that you can come up with. So here you can see the pink paper that I had pressed the water out of. I flipped it over and put it on top of that round screen. And I left, or the round metal shapes that I wanted those circle shapes. And then I left the screen on top. So I'm gonna set it aside and let it dry like that. But that's how I'll end up with one shape like this blue one that I've already made with those circles and stuff on it. So I'm gonna set it aside and let that dry. Here, we talked about how I had already let a paper dry, and when you just can spritz it with water, you can come back and I wanna mold it. And so it's kind of fun that you start looking around for things that you've purchased around the house, and a lot of times they come in plastic containers. We'll look at the plastic containers for what those shapes might be, because it's an opportunity to come and mold it like those shapes. So this was in the craft department. This had a bunch of different shapes of keys on it. And so I kept it because I thought, oh, that would be fun for molding paper. And so you can see the different keys. Let me see, can you kind of see that? Anyway, I'm gonna take my mold and put it on my paper and flip it over and lay it down here. And I'm gonna slowly try to push it in and shape all those keys. And that's just a plastic mold. Now you also can use candy molds, um, anything like that, if you have some of those that you're not using for baking anymore. Once you use them for these kind of projects, I wouldn't use them for baking anymore. But maybe that was a project you did at one time and you don't do that anymore and you can use them and give them a new life and try it for this. That would be fantastic. Another fun thing to do is if you have cookie cutters, it's fun to put the cookie cutters on your screen and pour the pulp in that cookie cutter and then you can make actually handmade paper shapes the shape of your uh, those cookie cutters. So then you can have all kinds of different things made with handmade paper. So you can see I've pressed this one in. Okay, flip it over, see if you can see. You can see it's gonna mold to those shapes. So we're gonna let those dry and then we'll come back and look at all the final product 